Welcome. In this session, we are going to discuss about JWT based authentication. What is JWT? JWT is JSON Web Token. It is an open standard RFC 7519, which defines a way for securely transmitting compact information between servers as a JSON object. This information can be verified and trusted because it is digitally signed. JWT is heavily used for token based authentication mechanism. It is a standard used to create access tokens for an application. Before getting into more details, we will understand how authentication mechanism works in web based applications and then how JWT is used as authentication token. Let's say that we have a web application which serves only static content. Anytime client makes a request, the web server simply returns the content. These kind of applications does not require any authentication and it does not validate the users. So no authentication concept here. There are other kind of web applications. Let's say it is shopping cart kind of applications, Amazon, Flipkart or whatever or it can be a banking application too. Anytime you access these kind of applications, the very first step would be user authentication. It prompts for user credentials. Once you are successfully authenticated, you can access subsequent pages of the application. Here you are authenticated only once and allowed to access rest of the pages multiple times until your session gets closed. How is authentication working behind the scenes here? Let's understand. While logging into the application, the client provides user credentials. These user credentials will be validated by authentication server. The auth server returns user data after successful credential validation. This user data contains user information like user ID, name, email and other personal information. Once the authentication is successful, the web server should allow user to access rest of the application pages. How does application server remembers that the user is already authenticated? What kind of information should be sent back to the client after successful login? Do you think the user credentials will be sent back as part of the response and it will be stored in the client? so that these credentials will be sent along with every subsequent request and the user credentials will be validated for every single request at server side? Definitely not. It is a security vulnerability to store user credentials anywhere in the system apart from the authentication server. And also authentication check will happen only once with auth server. So, it is web server's responsibility to keep track of user details after successful login and these details must be reused for subsequent requests. So user credentials will never be written as part of the response at any time. Then how is it handled? What kind of data will be sent back to the client as part of the response? I hope you might be aware of server side session handling and J session tokens. The application can store the user data as part of the session at the server side itself and return session token as part of the response. This token will be stored as a cookie or stored in the local cache at the client side. This token can be sent along with subsequent requests so that the user information will be pulled from the server session at the web server side. The token will be valid until the session expires. This is one of the known approach. Application uses tokens to validate user identity on every subsequent request. So what is the problem with this approach? Do you think of any? As number of users are growing on day to day, you need to scale your application. Vertical scaling does not help always as you will reach resource limits at one point of time or due to single point of failures. So you have to scale your application 
horizontally. So here is your application scaled horizontally. This is a load balancer receiving client request and sending to any of the web server. Let's say that the initial user authentication request landed on web server 2. So the user data will be stored in the session after successful authentication. This session data is specific to web server. So the user data will be stored within the web server 2 itself. All the subsequent user requests will be successful as long as if the request will be processed by this web server 2. But this is not the case with horizontal scaling. Load balancer can forward request to any of the web server. But if you notice, the session data is only within web server 2 in this case. The request will be start failing if it is processed by other than web server 2. So this is the problem. How can we address this? We can address this by enabling sticky sessions on the load balancer. With the sticky session configuration, load balancer can send the client request to the same web server until the session gets over. But this is not an optimal solution. This will defeat the purpose of the load balancer. The load will never be distributed equally onto the all web servers. So what is our next approach? In the next approach, rather storing data into the server side sessions, we can use caching. We can store data into the cache. This allows load balancer to distribute load evenly across all web servers. Now the user details will be stored into the cache after successful login. And any web server can process subsequent requests because the user data is within the cache. The major drawbacks are we need additional infrastructure to support caching layer. Also, what if cache goes down? Single point of failure, right? Now we will discuss about JWT and how it addresses token based authentication. Till now, we have seen session management at server side, but at very high level, JWT is a client side based stateless session provider. What I mean, JWT stores data at the client side and exchanges this data with web servers in the form of tokens. Let's understand in detail. Now here, as part of user authentication, the user credentials will be validated against authentication server. The auth server returns a JWT token on successful validation. This JWT token contains user details as a payload. This JWT token will be written back to the client. The client should send this JWT token for the subsequent web server calls for the user identity. Please note that since the user details are part of JWT token itself, any web server can process the request now. No server side session data management is required. Very simple, right? Now let's understand the structure of the JWT. Here is a simple example JWT token. If you closely look at this token, the token is broken down into three parts. Each part is colored differently. The parts are header, payload and signature. Each part is separated by each other with a simple dot. You can notice the dot here, here and in the sample token here, here. We will go to JWT.io debugger to play and understand JWT token better. So this is JWT provided debugger console. You can come play around and understand JWT token better. The first part in the token is header. This header is base64 encoded. Notice that it is not encrypted data. It is just base64 encoded data. If you decode this, it looks like as shown here, simple JSON data. It contains algorithm, this field, which is used to generate the signature and type. Type is JWT. There are various types of algorithms for signing purpose. 
Here is the list of algorithms you can play around, generate tokens and see the difference in the signatures. The second part is payload. In our case, it is user data. This data also simply base64 encoded. Again, it is not encrypted data. It is just base64 encoded data. Once you decode it, it is again a simple JSON. This payload information will be used at server side to know the user identity. I want to raise one point here. Since the payload is just base64 encoded data, you can read the payload data easily if you have access to the token. So it is advised not to store any sensitive information as part of the payload. The purpose of using JWT is not to hide data, but to ensure the authenticity of the data. How can we ensure the authenticity of data on the server side? How can we make sure that the data is not modified before reaching server? This is where the signature part will help us. The formula for deriving signature is as shown here. Along with base64 encoded header and token, a secret also required for signing process. This secret is not shared with anyone. It will be secured at server side only. The signature will be created using this secret key. The signature validation will fail if you try to tamper the data because the signature is created based on both header, payload and secret key. We will try that. I just tampered it and we can see the result here. If you try to tamper the token, the signature validations will fail at server side. So I'll revert this back. So this is how server can ensure the authenticity of the data. The JWT token is secured until the secret get compromised. You are not supposed to share this secret to anyone. You are not supposed to allow anyone to access this secret. So this is about JWT token structure. How can we send the JWT token as part of the API call? This is very simple. It is typically sent as authorization header. The format is as shown here. This is your header key and the value. The value is bearer space JWT token. There are various libraries available to work with JWT. It is a very mature solution. So no need to worry about library support. JWT is mainly used for authentication. Not only authentication, you can also use JWT for simple data exchange between two services. It is always recommended to keep the payload size as simple as possible. It must be compact. I personally never recommend JWT for authorization purpose. It is always better to restrict it at authentication level only. Since the payload data is open, it is always recommended to be careful while storing the token on the client side. It is not a good idea to store it in local cache as third party scripts can access your local cache. So better to store it with HTTP only cookies. Make sure that your services are SSL enabled. I mean HTTPS communication so that we can secure authorization header. Once you issue the token, it is very difficult to revoke the token. Since the JWT token is set to automatically expire, if an attacker gets the token before it expires, it can lead to various exploits. So be secure. So this is about JWT at high level. Hope you like it. Thank you. Please do like the video and do subscribe to the channel if you are not. Thank you.